Hey guys, and it's time for another quick tip tutorial, this time on deformers and just how to use them and why you should use them and just kind of how they will help you out. Um, just a little bit more in ZBrush. So what I have here, just a standard primitive, right? I've made that a poly mesh 3D. I'm just closing all these windows and pressing tab just to get it into full screen mode. I'm pressing W to get out the gizmo. And in your gizmo, when you click on the settings or the customize button, that little um, settings icon, it'll bring up this menu and if you click on one of these primitives you can actually customize them so if i press shift f just to get in our polyframe mode here i can adjust these adjusters if you will okay and just play around with the settings so the white one will adjust whether you want a hole in the um in the cylinder and you can as you can see you you've got just multiple divisions here that you can play around with and if you sort of do something by mistake like you press ctrl d and you undo that you can come back here and then click on the cylinder again and it'll take you back to where you were. So just a little bit of a, a tip there for that. So just in case, that's just with working with all your deformers. So again, you can use all of these adjusters to adjust different levels, in this case, on the mesh. Okay, so this is a really cool way to cr quickly create um, topology and bring it into ZBrush. Okay, and once you've found something you like, you can go back there and go to Gizmo 3D, and that'll kind of lock in what you want. Or what you have and I'm just going to scale this so we have something a little bit more to work with and what I'm going to do next is we're going to start working with the deformers again we're going to click on customize and this time we're going to use the deformer okay there's a few deformers we're just going to use the default one and you're going to see quite a lot of stuff going on here but let's just take it one step at a time let's work with these yellow arrows these are just the control points and unlike most stuff in ZBrush, the control points in this gizmo are actually very intuitive. And as you can see, the yellow adjusts the con those white control points. Okay, and unlike the rest of ZBrush, this is actually pretty intuitive. And if you do take the time to learn it, you can get pretty used to it. And it will seem quite natural once you get used to the idea of using these adjusters and the control points. So as you can see here, I've got these control points that I can mask and move around. And if you know to mask in ZBrush, you can just mask on the outside here like that. And just to a little bit of a side note here, I wanna to go to one of my uh, primitives here just to show you how masking works. So we can, so we're sort of on the same page there. So I'm just gonna mask this and wanna make sure to convert that to a polymesh 3D. Okay, so I'm just gonna mask this with control clicking and dragging. Okay, if I mask outside, I can clear that. If I control alt and mask, this will give me a white box, which will say mask this area and invert the mask. And obviously you can just work on the masked area, rather the unmasked area. If you control click on the mask, it will blur it. And if you control alt click on the mask, it will sharpen it. But as you can see, it blurs towards where the mask is. Okay, so that's just something you want to keep in mind when you're blurring stuff. Because it does move. That's not really necessary for what we're doing. But again, you can just mask something and then mask out. Control click out of there to invert it. You can control alt click and drag to a minus from the mask and then control drag to add to the mask so that's just masking 101 just to get you used to what we're doing to uh, going to do next here and you'll see we have all these control points okay and if you mask out again if you mistakenly do something you can go back there and go back to the deformer we'll discuss those options in a bit but what you can do here is just mask out okay with the white mask that's control alt and you'll get all of them and if you just mask out with a default mask it will basically mask everything for you so the black mask means nothing is there and the white mask means to select the white points basically. So you can just play around with that and just getting used to that will definitely help you out, especially with a deformer. Okay, and after you're done with that, you can use your actual gizmo to move these things around, to twist them and scale them and bend them. Well, not bend them, but rotate them. Okay, that's what a deformer does. And as you can see, we only have these control points on the ends. Again, those yellow arrows will guide those control points. Okay, so once again, I'm going to control alt select this piece. And if you kind of mess that thing up, you can reset it. Okay, just like I did there. That'll reset it back to its normal state. You can also press accept to accept that. But we're going to mess around a little bit more here. So I'm just going to bring that yellow arrow. Okay, you can see I can bring it out to add more and then push it in to have less of these control points. So I'm just going to bring that out a little bit and just have a little bit more control here with some of these um, areas. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to mask this, so we're only working with this piece, and I can just click and drag it. And I just want to show you what the white arrows are for next. So we've dealt with the yellow arrows, and now you can see when I push this down, the sharpness, okay, this controls the smoothness or the hardness, okay, and right there you can see just how hard that is. And if I push it up, it becomes smooth, and if I do it on this side, you can barely see it on this side, so if I pull it out on this side, 
you can really see that white arrow adding the hardness or the sharpness there and the softness by default it is sharp or soft rather and if you pull those white arrows in or push them in rather and that's what you have the deformers there. so deformer hard and deformer soft by default um, the deformer hard only has hard edges you can't adjust them and the deformer soft only has soft edges you cannot adjust them this one you can adjust okay and I'm just gonna reset that and just reset these points as well so as you can see pretty intuitive and if you take the time to learn it uh, you kind of get a, a good idea of what they or how to go about using it so here I just want to show you what the color arrows are for so now I'm just gonna add one control point so we have a midpoint and let's say you want to do something on the right and on the left I'm gonna pull so just watch down here you'll see a number pop up we have zero okay one and two okay so the gizmo move there but we've got three numbers zero one and two zero means it's off one means parallel and two means mirror so now I have it on parallel and as you can see it's doing what I do on the left or on the right rather to the left and it's not mirroring it but if I push it all the way to two I can now mirror this okay and that's what those color arrows are for so the yellow arrows are to adjust the control points the white arrows are for the smoothness and the hardness or softness and hardness and the color arrows okay uh, are for the uh, mirroring and parallel Okay, so once you're happy with what, uh, something you have, you can definitely go here and exp experiment. But what I'm going to do is click on the accept button, and now this basically reset it. And you can go around here and experiment with some of these other ones. So I'm going to go over here to maybe the inflate. And just like with the other ones, we have control points, okay? And as you can see here, I'm pulling this out, and it's inflating, okay, on that side. And if I do it again... Um, so that's the wrong point. I want to pull it on the blue here, so I'll mirror it. Okay, so again, it's the same concept The yellow arrows control the sort of control points in this case and here the white controls the sharpness, okay? So just like that you can control how sharp or how soft you want it to be Basically the distribution of the inflate. Okay, I'm just gonna reset that and let's do maybe the I think we'll do the slice so the slice is also pretty something uh, a little bit complicated and what we have here is this blue dot so you can slice on the vertical axis or the horizontal axis and you can see whenever I bring it to the middle it changes direction so you can't change the direction on the left and right or up and down you have to go to the middle of the box basically and then you can sort of change whether you want it horizontal or vertical okay and you can see we have quite a few slices in there so maybe you don't want that many what we'll do is we will adjust it with this piece here okay that's another yellow arrow that we can adjust and we push it all the way in or pull it all the way out it will add more cuts or slices okay and the other yellow arrow over here adjusts the thickness basically okay so I'm going to just move on the side here so you can see so that's the one right there and the white arrow will adjust the uh, just whether you want to extrude it okay so just the extrusion level so you can either pull it out and here we have symmetry on Okay, I'm slightly switched it on, but you can see that's symmetry, and that's with the green arrow there. Okay, and again, we can do it on the left and right. So you kind of have the uh, get the idea by now, right? As long as you know how those sort of control points work, you can manipulate them and use them however you want. Okay, and it's kind of just the thinking behind it. So here, I'm just going to show you how I created... Well, I didn't actually create it using this method, but you can do it this method. I'm just going to create that cube and adjust it and move it with our gizmo. And here we'll use the control points from the deformer, right? Just to deform it into a way that we want. Normally you wouldn't be able to do this with a move brush. That would take forever, right? So now I'm just doing that. I'm accepting it. Okay, and then next we'll go into something like the bend modifier. Okay, and then we'll just bend this with these arrows. And if you're unsure about what, an, uh, what the controller does or the adjuster does, you can always look down at the, at the options and it'll show you what it does it might say bend or curve or something like that and so as you can see all I do is I took a cube I adjust the uh, the control points and now we kind of have right that piece that I use for the um, Batman who laughs now, again I don't use this specific method to create this there's obviously multiple ways you can use to create each item or subtool in ZBrush but you can definitely use it to create something like this right and as you can see that was pretty quick and easy and even with these headband here you could definitely use the same method right you could take the the cone option and you can bring down all the options that you have the sort of pyramid shape and then adjust it using the deformer 
So as you can see, the deformer is a really, really versatile tool to use in ZBrush. And you can use it to make quite a few things and definitely experiment around with it. I don't go through all of them because there's quite a few there. Some of them are quite self-explanatory as well. I just wanted to show you how to use the deformer because that's quite the... That's the one you're probably going to use the most. And then maybe the inflate and the slice is a little bit more sort of esoteric. So you might want to have a little bit of guidance there. But as you can see, as long as you know how to use those control points, you're pretty much good to go. And as you can see, you can kind of use them for multiple purposes and kind of get pretty creative with them. And yeah, that is pretty much it for this one. Um, like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments section. Subscribe if you really like my content and you want to see more. Hit that bell notification while you're at it. And check out my links in the description. I've got quite a few tutorials out and one or two paid tutorials as well on ArtStation and Gumroad. So check those out as well if you want to. And yeah, just let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments section. I'll see you guys in the next one.